Got another incredible week, Baruch Hashem, of learning five minutes of tefillah a day. We're towards the end of this type of tefillah called the needful, called falling, turning to Hashem, realizing that He is the address and the only address. We spoke yesterday how it's a mindset, how one still will work and one still will go to a doctor, but he'll understand that at the end of the day, what is allowing him to be better? What is causing him to have his paycheck? It is not the job, nor is it the doctor. Those are mechanics, those are avenues. But the deciding and determining factor is the one and only address called HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And now we continue, we're in Ice Gimel over here of Nepal, and says Hashem Shem Pinkis, if we think about what we've been talking about, this is really what is called Anava, humility. And he says Anava, humility, is really the Hakdama, the introduction, Utenai, and the stipulation, Hamiakiv, that will hold back Tvila. So we're about to learn what is the very introduction and what is the very purposeful stipulation of Tvila itself. Very incredible. What is that? It's humility. And he explains, it's a little bit of a deep idea, but something I believe we could all understand. He says, when one is haughty, He's far from Hashem. Why? Because I'm something big. I'm something. Hashem is something else. When one is humble, when one has humility, what is he showing? He's showing that he's close to Hashem. So he says, what is tefillah? Tefillah is devekus, connection, kirva la Hashem. That's what tefillah is. So for trying to come closer, for trying to connect to Hashem, what do we need? We need to be humble. We need to be low. We need to realize that we are not that which is making anything happen. It is Hashem. So this is really only after understanding that which we have learned until now. Now when we apply it, we come up with this incredible idea. And we realize that Anava is the Iker Machos of Tefillah and the Mitzias of Tefillah itself. And he continues and he shows how deep this goes. He says that the entirety of tefillah is in the lavush, is the clothing of anava. And he paints such a beautiful picture. And really, as we said, this is the next step of everything we've been talking about. If that poor person shows up at the wealthy person's door and he knocks, and before he opens his mouth, and before he even explains uh, that the wealthy man is the and the only address, he lies down on the floor in his tattered clothing, showing complete humility, 100% dependency on the person he's about to talk to. At that moment, before he opened his mouth, he gave the greatest plea, the most amazing speech, tzedakah appeal he'll ever give, without opening his mouth. Why? Because he showed he's completely dependent and humble on the person he's about to talk to. Says Hashem Shepinkis, when we approach tefillah, we come to davening. Let's say, for example, Shema Nasrei. We take our three steps back. We take our three steps forwards. We say, Hashem, please, Hashem, open my mouth. And maybe we pause for a moment. Or maybe it's at a different time of davening. And what do we think? What's the image we conjure up? We realize and we let it hit us home how little and nothing we are. That, without even opening our mouth, is the most incredible tefillah. Without even saying to Hashem, please give me parnasa, please give me health, and please give me hatzlacha. You don't even need to talk at that point. Because at that point, when you show Hashem, and he proves this from, from Tehillim, he quotes the capital of Tehillim, in which David HaMelech says, Shir Lamalais, Eilecha Nosasius Einai, I raise my eyes to you. Hayoshvi Vashamayim, Hashem who dwells in heaven, says Hashem Shabinkis. That act, that act of raising our eyes to Hashem, of pausing, realizing that we're nothing, when we turn to Hashem, that itself is a bakasha atsuma biyoyser. That might be the greatest feeler we said the whole day. So this is something that's a deep point, something that we need to think about. He concludes and says, like a child turning to his father with those puppy eyes, just needing from his father the show of love, the show of care, the show of dependency. 
and it's a form of tefillah that the more we think about and allow to delve and dwell inside of us, then even before we open our mouth, we'll be davening the most beautiful tefillahs.